So you want to get yourself a cruiser motorcycle, but you don't want that patched up Sons of Anarchy vibe. You also don't want a motorcycle that all your sport bike buddies are going to make fun of you on as just being a vibrator on two wheels. And you don't want to spend more than 10,000 bucks. Well, new for 2021, Honda will sell you this Rebel 1100 right here for 9,299 bucks. You can also get it with DCT for 10 grand if you're afraid of using a clutch lever like a baby. But the question is, is this motorcycle a real bike or is it just a poser in cosplay? Let's find out today. Now, if you were wondering where we got this motorcycle, this is part of our Modern Classic giveaway series, and your time is running out to get entered to win this bike. You have until midnight tonight, the day that this video goes out, to get your entries in. Remember, if you click the link down below, go to shop.yamminoob.co or merch.yamminoob.co. Yes, those are new URLs, thank you very much. You can get yourself 3x entries to win by using the code REBEL3X. Now remember, you only have until midnight, so click those links and get yourself signed up while you can because this bike right here is actually a very good motorcycle, despite some of my little quibbles. Now to explain what we're going to do, because this is a cruiser motorcycle and everybody tells me we have to review them differently, normally I think that's a bit of BS, but there is something about this motorcycle that needs to be explained relative to its competition. So let's take a second and explain exactly what we're going to be doing today. Now before you get too scared, we are going to be doing all of the usual stuff that we normally talk about. Our engine, specs, handling, all of that good stuff, giving you our opinions on this motorcycle. But as some of those commenters down below are probably already telling you, you can't really review a cruiser in the same way, right? Well, not really. I think that's total BS. But there are some things that we do need to talk about with this motorcycle relative to other bikes in the segment. That sound, character, feeling, and curb appeal. Does this motorcycle hold a candle to all of those other motorcycles out there in this segment? Or is it just a little bit too nerdy? So we are going to be taking some time to compare this motorcycle to other bikes like the Sportster, the Bolt, and others in the segment. But before we dive too far into that, let's take a look at the specs on this parallel twin engine here. Very different in its segment. Now on paper, this motorcycle right here feels like a direct shot at the Harley Sportster. And no, not the new one, the old one with the air-cooled V-twin in it. This motorcycle here is powered by a 1084cc parallel twin putting down 86 horsepower and 72 foot-pounds of torque. It's weighing in at 487 pounds, which makes it substantially lighter than the Harley-Davidson and a lot pokier. This motorcycle's engine is derived off the Africa Twin, and so it makes its power completely differently than any other V-Twin out there. And it's a very different feel. In fact, why don't we take it out on the road really quick and see how exactly this motorcycle feels. So pulling onto the highway here on the Rebel, the first thing you notice is that it really wants to rev out. A lot of times on big cruisers, what you want to do is you just want to get to about 4,000 RPM, maybe even 3,500, and then you're cruising. But this bike likes to rev all the way out to the tippy top, and this is mostly because it is a parallel twin. And parallel twins, over V-Twins prefer to be revved out. Now I know there are a lot of sporty V-Twins out there uh, that like to find their power at the very top. Ducatis, even the new Harley 1250 really likes to rev out. But over typical V-Twins that you would find in a cruiser of this size and state, this bike is very, very rev happy. The engine, honestly, over a cruiser engine, feels more like a big MT-07. It's very rowdy and very punchy. But with that comes a pretty jagged fueling on this motorcycle. If you look at that, I mean, it's it's pretty shaky. Uh, I, admittedly, I was attempting to make it shake, but the on-off throttle is far from smooth, especially when you're really trying to get after it. This motorcycle does shake a little bit when you give it gas. Now, 
mostly that's alleviated by just riding the pants off this motorcycle. Yeah, you do have a lot of torque on tap here, but the way to ride this bike is to really wind it out, really search for the power. But now is that really what you want out of your cruiser engine? Let's take a quick sound clip of this motorcycle at idle and under power and compare it to the other bikes in this segment and see if it has that right character. So as you can tell, this motorcycle sounds pretty different compared to the sea of V-Twins all trying to copy Harley's single crank pin sound. And while the Rebel doesn't sound like it's throwing spuds out of the exhaust all the time, this motorcycle does stay true to its name and break the mold a little bit. Personally, I'm excited to see what other kind of engines we might see in cruisers now that Honda has gotten a nice parallel twin in here. Maybe we might see that Kawasaki ZH2 powered cruiser that we've all been dreaming of because we know they've never actually made a real cruiser before, right? What about the Vulcan S? Shh, shh, we don't talk about that one. Shh, it's okay. Shh. Now it should come as no surprise that Honda put a good engine in a good motorcycle. It's kind of what they do, guys. But what really surprised me about this motorcycle is how the suspension and frame cause this motorcycle to handle really, really well compared to the competition. If you take a look at this bike, you have a normal sort of budget-ish front suspension. You do have preload on here, but no other adjustability. And again, you have preload here in the back, but you do have these racy looking piggyback shocks on here. The combination here makes for a motorcycle that handles really, really well, even under my weight on this bike. You also have a stressed member frame here, which normally you see cradle frames in these sort of cruisers. It makes them heavy, it makes them handle a little bit funny. But this thing is set up like a proper motorcycle, and it causes it to handle, again, very, very sharply. Now, it is worth pointing out that the ergonomics package on this motorcycle is a bit strange. So throwing a leg over it at six foot four, 240, 230 ish pounds and a 34 inch inseam, this motorcycle feels pretty small. Now, if you saw my Sportster review, it is not as small as that Sportster. This bike is bigger than the Sportster S, which is nice. It's a more comfortable place to sit. I would say it feels basically like the old school Sportster. Again, it's a little bit tight for a guy my size, but any shorter and you're gonna fit on here really, really well. Before we move on, I wanted to get Yam on this motorcycle so that he can tell you how he feels. <sighs> Talk about these dang cruisers again all the time. It's all right, man, again. it's okay. We don't need you for long. I just need you to get on the motorcycle, tell the people at home how you feel on it. All right, so as you guys know, 5'11", 165-ish pound, 32-inch inseam, those are my stats. Uh, swinging a leg here on the Rebel, I have always felt that this motorcycle is a little awkwardly shaped and sized. Um, I feel like you get this weird hunchback thing going on with it when you ride it. Um, you tell me that's kind of a normal thing for sporty cruisers. Yep. I just, I just, I just want to do this. I don't understand why I can't on this bike, um, and I don't love it. So yeah, it goes for me a bit weird. Am I done? Yep, you're done, but don't go too okay, far. We are going to need you a little no bit later on. Right, don't go too... Yeah, I'm oh. going to go do some track days. See ya. Oh, boy. All right, well, I'll, I'll rope him back later. Let's move on in the next section. Now, Yam's ergonomic misgivings aside, out here on a twisty road, this motorcycle feels great. Yeah, it might not be the most comfortable place to sit, but on the side of the tire, you forget about how bad the ergonomics can be and how uncomfortable they can be just because of how much fun this bike is to ride thanks to its really well set up suspension. When you get it on the side of the tire, it finds a line and holds a line really, really well. And despite having a 130 front tire, the side to side action on this motorcycle is actually really quick for a cruiser. If you're going to try and compare this to something like the Harley Sportsters of old or the Yamaha Bolt, there really is no comparison. This thing gets online, holds line, and powers out of corners so much better. 
Would I change the suspension if this were my motorcycle? Yes, probably. I would like there to be a little bit less wallow out of the suspension. But at that point, are we talking about a cruiser anymore or are we talking about a naked bike? It really does feel to me like this motorcycle wanted to be a naked bike, but Honda was like, we need a bigger cruiser to start selling to American audiences who don't love the Rebel 500. But you know what? I think that the cruiser marketplace actually needed a motorcycle like this to show cruiser guys exactly how good a motorcycle can handle. You don't have to live with poor handling cruisers anymore. This is the year 2021 after all, and it would be great if a lot more cruiser manufacturers out there, and I'm looking at you Harley Davidson, got all of their motorcycles to handle as good as this motorcycle does and that Sportster S, because man alive, is this new crop of cruisers that can actually handle super exciting to me. Now bringing it back into the shop for one last time, we've talked a lot about the tech specs on this bike, how it handles, how it feels, but here's the real question. Hondas are known for being kind of nerdy motorcycles, and I know I'm gonna get pilloried down below for having said that, but there is a nerdy quality about a lot of Honda motorcycles, and in this category, you want your motorcycle to be cool and flashy, make the great sound and have curb appeal. Yeah. In your opinion, does this motorcycle have any good curb appeal? I think if you don't have a background or a kind of preconception about cruiser motorcycles, I think this bike has a lot of curb appeal. It's a handsome bike, a modern looking motorcycle. Um, I think it looks pretty great if you don't have that preconception. A lot of the commenters we've seen that talk about this bike are like diet in the wool Harley guys and have grown up with Harleys and they tell us that's a girl's bike, it can't possibly compete with their corn fed Sportster 1200 or whatever Harley that they're on. But yeah, that's kind of where I'm coming at it from. Like for me, I think it's a handsome, cool cruiser that you can get at a pretty affordable price that is a pretty sweet ride. But yeah, if you know a lot about cruisers and you're looking for that real, you know, joie de vivre that a lot of them have, I think this does miss the mark a little bit. I think a lot of people think that because the cylinders are going like this, and not like this, you know? They're like, <laughs> it's a nerd bike. But that's kind of silly, I think, right? What do you think? Yeah, so in isolation, I think this motorcycle is really great. Yeah. I think it, on its own, it looks really cool. I like the blacked out aesthetic, even though it took a little while for me to get it. I kind of wish that the down tubes here were silver instead of blacked out. Mm. I wish there was a little bit more color on the bike because it is a little bit edge lordy from time to time. Yeah. But when you put it next to a Sportster or a bigger Harley, then you really start to be like, well, it's kind of plasticky and built on a budget, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So the only saving grace there is that this thing absolutely whoops up on basically every Harley out there. Yeah, remember our Sport Glide that yeah. we had? This thing absolutely <laughs> walloped the Sport Glide. So this, in my opinion, is the kind of bike where yeah, it's a cruiser. Yeah, it doesn't look as great, but it speaks softly and carries a big stick. Do you think that it's a cruiser for non-cruiser guys? Yes, actually. I've actually come to think that this motorcycle is basically just a giant MT-07, just sort of mushed down and turned into a cruiser. Yeah. If you're looking for that uh, you know, aesthetic and feeling, but you don't want to sacrifice performance and handling and quality braking. I mean, this motorcycle is a great package for somebody who wants a different looking naked bike. That's really what this is. Yeah, I think that this bike makes a lot of sense for someone who's maybe upgrading from a Vulcan 650, wants to stay in that metric cruiser lineup, maybe someone who has never ridden a cruiser before, wants to try something different. Uh, this is a nice entry point, and a lot of the controls here and the gas tank and everything is gonna feel familiar if you're coming from the Japanese sports segment or even the European sports segment. This is a more traditional motorcycle than a cruisery and the Harley kind of feel, because I remember the first time I rode the Sportster, I was like, what is this, you know? Like, why did they think this was acceptable? Because I was used to bikes that had this kind of fit and finish and build quality in this specific way. Like this gauge cluster here, all the levers, everything on this bike feels familiar to me, you know? Mm -hmm. And I like that about it. Um, so you wanna do your wrap up thoughts on it? Yeah, final thoughts. I think that this motorcycle here is an excellent motorcycle, but a bad cruiser. Mm. As a cruiser motorcycle, it leaves something to be desired in terms of comfort and ergonomics and actual ability to cruise, but all of that falls away the second you get it on the side of the tire and you dig into the throttle. 
because the engine is so great and the suspension is so compliant. It's a great package, guys. Yeah. I really like this motorcycle. One out of 10, what do you give it? Mm, I'm gonna give this one an eight out of 10 Ooh. because I do think that it is a little bit cheap here and there. I wish it was a little bit more buttoned up. I do wish that the gas tank didn't do that. People uh, online tell us that's just ours, but I don't know. Uh, we got to review the bike that we have. <laughs> yeah. So there are some things on here that I wish I could change, and the aftermarket isn't quite there yet, so I am docking it a little bit. But out of the box, very solid motorcycle. Yeah. Solid 8 out of 10. I think I would agree. I would also give this bike an 8 out of 10, but for different reasons. Um, I think that the ergonomics for someone in my size, I don't know how it fits for you, but I just, I just feel weird on this bike. And I don't say that about a lot of bikes. A lot of bikes, I kind of work around the ergos, I've worked with it, but this weird like hunchback thing that this bike does, I've never gelled with it. And my back actually does hurt after riding this bike, which I don't love. So I don't really fit on this thing very well. Um, so I do want to dock it for that. And I also just feel like, you know, it's just, it's just missing something and I don't quite know what it is, but if you want a modern cruiser, you don't really care about the heritage type of thing, uh, this Honda Rebel makes a lot of sense and is a really, really great bike. And we do have to stress that it is like under $10,000, right? $92.99. There you go. After tax, credit, and license and all that stuff, it is a little over 10 grand. But for a great price point, this is a great motorcycle and Honda did a very good job. It remains to be seen whether it will be taken to by the cruiser community and be enjoyed and modified and actually, you know, become a reputable platform, kind of like the Sportster. But uh, yeah, we really enjoyed our time with it. I know you have spite, right? Oh, absolutely. I am sad that we have to give it away, but our time is officially over as of midnight tonight. Yep. After uh, midnight tonight, no more Honda Rebel. Get your entries in now. Remember to use that code REBEL3X, and you might walk away with this Rebel in your driveway. But that's going to wrap up today's video, guys. Thanks so much for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. See you later. Keep watching Yammy New. Keep watching Yammy New. Keep watching Yammy New. Keep watching Yammy New. Keep watching Yammy New.